Craig here from Amara Water Sports. We should do a basic safety video on SUP. Standard six foot surfboard. And this is a nine foot SUP, which is actually quite small for an SUP. The main difference between the two is uh, basically the size and the weight of the board. See this uh, surfboard? It's super light, right? It's also extremely maneuverable and that's why it feels so good to ride. Uh, the SUP is probably four times or more heavier. Uh, that's why you can stand on this the whole time. Have lout, have lean, standing up the whole time. Which is awesome because it means you can basically surf on rivers and lakes. Shout, shout. Uh, the downside is that uh, it's a lot more bored in the water with you, um, which is a good thing because it floats, uh, it can help you, but in the white water, in the swell, uh, it becomes a big object that's moving with a lot of inertia and you need to be aware of this. So just a couple of points today uh, to hopefully help make your SUP experience a bit more safe. One of the things I love about SUP is its simplicity. Basically you have the board, the paddle, the leash and really the only moving part is yourself. The leash is part of your safety equipment but you need to understand how it works, uh, how to use it safely and its potential hazards because this can also hurt you. Uh, so I'm rolling. How long should a leash be? I would say there's three factors that affect that. One is the elasticity of the leash material. A heavier board has got more force to be absorbed per meter, so a longer leash can absorb more force. If you want to walk the board, as we do in the sup, get on the nose, come back to the fins, you need a leash that's going to be long enough to let you reach the nose. Personally, I prefer a shorter leash so that I can regain control of my board as fast as possible. I don't want it to be too far away from me. The other factor to consider, especially if you're surfing in an environment where there's a lot of people around, is the length of the leash plus the length of the board together is your safety margin. You're going to fall off this board a lot, especially in the surf. Keep safety distance around you and you know, be be considerate one of the reasons we wear a leash even if it's not big surf and you don't think you're gonna fall if this board comes to shore without you it could hit a kid playing in the water you wouldn't want that to happen or if you're paddling together with friends on flat water and you fall off the back of the board you can spit that board forward the leash will stop it from spearing your friend so once again, even on flat water, wear your leash and keep a safe distance from each other, especially if you're falling around, you know, trying new things. The only time I would say do not wear a leash is if you're in water, that fast flowing water with obstacles. You can have a situation where the leash gets caught around something, you get washed downstream and the force of the water is it's greater than you can reach up to release the leash. That's a very dangerous time to be wearing a leash. Basically in the ocean, it's better to wear a leash. Yeah. Also the board floats, so uh, it's a safety device itself if you're attached to it. About that. There's three parts to the leash. There's the attachment collar, the actual cord of the leash, and uh, leash attachment to the board. Uh, firstly, generally there's two ways you wear a leash, either around your ankle, like this, or I actually like to wear it just below the knee. It tends to keep the cord away from my feet a little bit. Obviously this, the um, standoff part points backwards away from you. This is a very important point. Uh, if you ever need to release your leash, if it's caught on a rock or for some reason it's tangled, you need to be free of the board. You attach the leash in such a way that when you release it, you pull it away from your body. So this would be a quick release situation. 
locate the leash. Find it, got it, away from your body, you're free. And you should practice that. Uh, a small thing like this can make a big difference, especially when uh, you're running out of air. <laughs> the core of the leash is designed to have a bit of give in it, so it'll actually stretch and absorb some of the load. Um, it can also cause the board to actually return towards you quite quickly, and it will happen fin first. So as you uh, as you come back through the surface of the water, or basically any time you're off the board, you want to be aware of where is the board now and where is the board about to be. And if you don't know, keep your hands up. You know, like come, just keep your hands around your head. Not hard like this because the board will break your arm, but just soft. So you just, just catch and roll with it, deflect it from your body, right? Um, so the core of the leash. It uh, can become wrapped around your body, of course. This is generally not a big deal. Uh, I would suggest, however, if a cord did become wrapped around you in the water, you can imagine here, it's sort of come wrapped around my leg, and the white water is going to take the board away from me with a lot of force. It's going to pull quite tight. I think it's a good idea to clear your body from the leash. Do that first, then you come up with your hands up, ready to locate the board. Get some air. <laughs> if the leash is wrapped around you and you're in the surf, generally once the wave has passed you, the force has gone from the board, this will become loose again, then you have time, you can release it from yourself. Yeah. The number one thing is don't panic. Even if you don't get a breath of air, you still have about 20 seconds of oxygen in your body, even without a breath. However, if you panic, you'll go through that oxygen much faster. So probably the very first thing to do is to try and take, create a little bit of space before you do anything. And just go, okay, status, I'm getting washed. Where's the leash? Where's the board? Clear the leash, find my sunglasses. Okay, I'm coming up, where's the board? The third part of the leash, where it attaches to the board. I really want you to pay attention to this one. Even if you're just on flat water, um, it's very tempting to grab control of the board from this point. Just about everyone I know has done this at some stage. Really don't do this. It's okay, you want to grab control, grab the leash a foot behind the board, that's okay. If you try and grab the back of the board, not such a good idea because you've got these sharp fins here. Better to grab from here. The water's going to brush it away. Even uh, in flat water or very small surf, I'd make it a habit of don't even let anybody else touch your board in this area. So I know it's fun to tow kids behind on the leash while you're paddling, but they can still get hurt by having a hand in this area for the same reasons. So I would say this is a no-go area for everybody. If you do grab it here, you uh, the board, remember, it's between say 6 to 15 kilos and it's getting washed around an incredible amount of force you can get your hands squashed into here with a lot of force worse still you can get your finger or fingers entrapped in this area and twists around and then it's washed away from you it can cut you to the bone so best thing to do don't touch this area don't use this as, an, as, an, as a handle take it back here it's much safer handling the board in the water. This is really important, it's really simple. Board management. If you're not on the board, you always want to have the board next to you or behind you. With respect to a wave in front of us. So here we are, I'm off the board, I'm walking out towards the ocean. I stand next to the board, one hand on it or on the rail. I can sort of guide it push it through the white water a bit, keep it away from me. Um, I may come more forward, hold the board yeah, about here, keep it away and we go through the white water together. Push it forward and away from me. Uh, if I lose grip, keep the arms up. We wear the leash on the back leg to keep it clear of our feet. Uh, falling. 
you'll get a lot of practice at this. Don't worry about that. When you fall, you want to fall away from the board. Uh, you want to fall off the back or off the side. Keep the paddle away from the board when you fall. I'd say the worst way to fall is probably forwards. If you fall, you, know, you can trap your fingers between the board and the paddle and then you fall on it. That's quite painful, it's unnecessary. Better just, if you fall, you fall. Don't fight it. Just get, a, get yourself clear, especially if you're on a wave. Fall, get away. Fall to the sides. You can hang on to your paddle when you fall. Uh, or if you lose it, go to the board first. Get on the board, kneel, lay down, paddle, go retrieve your paddle. Paddle floats, it's not a problem. When you fall off in the surf, you go under, as you come up, you really don't know where the board is. So you could come up, and the board's actually coming straight for your head. Uh, or you could come up underneath the board. So because we don't know, there's a time of uncertainty, we need to prepare as best we can. Uh, there's a, the, the way they teach surfers in this situation. As you come up, you have one arm to protect your face, one arm over your head. So you come up like this. Um, I would say to do that would be soft. So if it hits you, just roll with it. I think it's really important. You don't want to block this thing. It's going to be, it weighs a lot. It's going to be moving fast. You just want to go, whoa, let me go, whoo, straight over. If you move with it, uh, there's no impact. It won't hurt you too much. Uh, obviously, the fins are sharp, uh, but even then, it's when fast moving objects hits an immobile object, that's when the most damage happens. You want to roll with it. The great thing with SUPs, you can ride a smaller wave, and you can ride a wave before it breaks, which means you can catch the wave before other surfers can. It gives you more time on the way. Um, but you need to not be too greedy about this. So if you get a good ride, you know, see who else is out in the water, let someone else have a go. Especially if you're not super confident, uh, leave more space between you and other water users. Uh, it's nice to communicate with people around you a little bit, just nod, say hello, let them know that you've seen them uh, and make sure that they can see you. So what is a safe distance? Well if your leash is three meters and the board is say two meters that means you got five meters before you hit something. So you, it would make sense to give yourself at least 15 or 20 meters. So if you're coming that close to somebody jump off the board, grab the leash back here, anchor it, and stop. Uh, don't wait until it's too late and then try and swerve or move. That's not smart. You're taking away your, your time. Your longer boards have more glide. That means you can get more speed. So you can match the speed of the wave earlier. You can catch the wave further out you can be in the less steep part of the wave. Uh, traditional surfers, their boards, they don't even float when they sit on them. They have zero glide, they have to paddle to get onto the wave. They need to be right in the steepest part of the wave. They need to be on peak. We do not need to be on peak unless we're riding like a six or seven foot sub. Uh, because we don't need to be on peak, if you're sharing the water with other surfers, let them have the peak. No. Uh, we can be further out to the side, we can be further out, we can get more rides more easily. But make sure, you know, be courteous. They were there before we came along. And, uh, and you may need their help one day, so you know, good to keep them on side. If you're in the water, a lot of surfers around, uh, you can put your paddle up out of the water. It's easier to see, it's just a sign. Someone can easily pick that. It's like, oh, body in the water steer clear, go around. If you're in trouble, one hand up, one arm up is your distress signal. If you see anyone else in trouble, if you're not sure, go over, ask them if they need help. You see them with a hand up, go over, help them, get some, else, some other help involved. So what am I wearing? 
impact vest. Why do I wear it? Several reasons. If you're on the wave, the wave is here, you're riding along, you're engaging this rail to keep the board tracking that way, you let the pressure off that rail, the board rolls up, gets sucked up by the wave, guess what? Smack straight in the ribs. Impact vest, save you a trip to the hospital, keep you on the water. The impact vest is also great on the river, especially if you're not wearing a leash. I wear my impact vest when I windsurf because I don't wear a leash. I can be separated from the equipment. I don't want to swim 6Ks home. Impact vest, bob around, I can still swim. This impact vest, the starboard vest, has been designed full range of motion. It's got five kilograms of buoyancy. It's not an officially rated life jacket. It's probably the next best thing. The vest is good anytime you got other objects in the water. Rocks in the water, lots of other boards. You might do everything right, you can still get hit by somebody else's board. The impact vest gives you that protection. It also gives you a bit of buoyancy so that when you're coming back up, you can, you know, the, the jacket will bring you up. Uh, but you don't want too much buoyancy. Sometimes you've got to swim underneath the wave. You can do that with this. You don't bob like when you pick your impact vest, you want to wear it as tight as you comfortably can. Keep in mind, are you going to be wearing a wetsuit later on? You need to allow a bit of room for that. Uh, I like this vest because it's, it fits snug. It's got some uh, extra straps here. I can tighten it up, which means I can also loosen it if I'm going to wear additional neoprene underneath. Uh, it, it covers up high for my ribs, but I still have a full range of motion. UP is an outdoor sport, so we need to be aware of exposure. Uh, flat water paddling especially, you're out in the sun for a long time. Uh, I like to wear a hat, keep the sun off my head. This hat has a lot of shade. You can wear it like this. It has a, a extra long back to protect the neck. And in wide water or surf, the chin strap so you don't lose the hat. Also, uh, you need to drink a lot of fluids. You need to drink a lot of water. Uh, we now have Camelback. Be aware, the Camelback, if you put a liter of liquid in it, you've added about one kilo to your body weight. So your impact vest will help offset that for the buoyancy. The great thing about a Camelback is you actually remember to drink small amounts regularly. If you have a bottle in your backpack, it's a little bit too difficult to stop, unpack it, and take a drink. Camelback, you do remember to keep drinking all the time. Also, sunscreen. <laughs> Bring enough for everyone on your trip, because someone will forget for sure. 30 or 50 plus is good. Also, something for the lips, very good. If you're in tropical countries, like we are now, mosquito repellent, pretty toxic stuff, I, I assume. However, the organic ones may not be strong enough when you're in a high risk area. Uh, daytime mosquitoes can carry dengue fever, nighttime mosquitoes, malaria. Most parts of Thailand are not bad, but hey, don't take a chance, just put some uh, mosquito repellent on. Uh, also in warm waters, cuts uh, get infected very easily. Uh, 27 degrees, 30 degrees is like a perfect environment for bacteria to grow. Uh, little cuts are inevitable. I normally wear uh, booties, surf shoes. If, if I'm on reef or rocks, I always wear shoes. Don't wait until you get cut and then put them on. Uh, but you still end up getting little cuts, little scratches. The rule is, get out of the water, wash it with clean, sweet water, fresh water, then put some betadine on, then when you shower later, get out of the shower, put the betadine on again, keep applying it. If you do that, it won't turn into a nasty wound, and then you need to go on antibiotics, go to the hospital, etc. High protection. Uh, the sun's pretty harsh, your eyes have got to last your whole life. UV protected glasses, uh, I think they're essential. These ones are polarized, 
it helps you to see the details in the clouds it takes the glare off of the water it helps you look down through the water uh, the strap is a must you've got a strap you got you won't lose them quite so often <laughs> I know a lot of surfers like to be wear as little as possible in the water which I understand but really you've got to look after your eyes so if you get a pair of sunglasses for surfing or for water sports make sure they have strap which is also a float when I wipe out one of the first things I do is look for my sunglasses in case they've come off stretching warm-up I know not everybody likes to stretch but believe me right kind of stretching will save you injuries when you stretch uh, it's not so important which stretches you do what's really important is pay attention Listen to your body as you stretch. If you're stretching slowly and you go, oh, that feels odd, pay attention. If something doesn't quite feel right, it's quite probably your next injury waiting to happen. If you stretch slowly with awareness, you'll notice something has changed in your body. Right? So you don't just go, uh, 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 okay, I'm ready to go now. No, 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 slow down. Stretch slowly, listen, increase the stretch every time you do it, and pay attention. You normally get a warning before an injury happens. You stretch and you warm up, they go together. Start off moving very slowly, well within your stretch limit, building up to your full stretch. When you reach your maximum stretch, Hold, you need to hold it for 20 seconds for it to be effective. A little bit of stretching will really help the way you surf. Uh, windsurfing, SUP, these sorts of sports, most of your board sports, you need to have loose hips. Uh, loose ha loose and hamstrings, full shoulder movement, full twist. Give yourself that time, it'll prevent injuries and uh, you'll have a better session. Well, that brings us to the end of our SUP safety video. It's also the end of our board review, where we just finished testing the Starboard Hero, the Starboard Rush, and the Starboard 711. We had great surf from uh, waist to actually overhead high in Koh Phayam out of Ranong in Thailand.